Now, Scientology hasn't been out of the papers in recent weeks. Of Queen Star Leah Remy has written one of the most hotly anticipated books of the year, Troublemaker, Surviving Hollywood and Scientology. A member of the church for more than 30 years, her defection was low, even for a church that knows a lot about bad press. But Scientology is still a religion that most of us know little about. We are joined now by ex-member John Dagnan, who was a Scientologist for 22 years before he decided to turn his back. Now, John, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. We've all heard a lot about Scientology, connecting it to lots of different Hollywood stars, but what exactly is Scientology? Well, I, I mean, it claims, to be, it claims to be a religion. Um, it, it, it claims to be a path to enlightenment and to self-improvement, if you like, right? That's a very simplistic mm -hmm. explanation of what it is. Um, what it really is kind of a... It, it's an operation, really, that um, drags you in and kind of makes you believe that you can become a super being. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. Okay. Yeah. And when you decide to join the... Of Scientology, like you did when you were about yeah. 21 years yeah. old, yeah. you basically have to forget all your past in the sense of your religious and otherwise. Well, yeah, I mean, what is? I, I mean, look, I got recruited off the street in Stuttgart, right? I was vulnerable. I was um, probably a bit depressed. Um, I was very aggressive recruited. Moved, moved up into the into the organisation. Very hard sold books and courses. Um, Reading everything mm -hmm. about it. it. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, in the state that I was in. It sounded plausible. It sounded very, very plausible mm -hmm. to me at the time. And so I, I, I jumped in head first, basically. So you were taken out of the world that you were in and you were immersed into a totally different world. Well, completely. Uh, and you're isolated from former friends, from family. It's just the, 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 the cocoon they build around you, basically. And that is done on purpose. Your total world, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're 24 hours a day, essentially. Your total focus is you've got to move up to this fantastic state of clear. Yeah. You know. When we look at uh, famous Scientologists, I suppose Tom Cruise is the obvious one, uh, and maybe John Travolta, mm. and they have these super fantastic lives. They really do. They're, they're rich, they're famous, mm. you know, it, theoretically they're happy. Do they inspire you within the church to, to look to these type of people to say, you too can move up in the world? Yes, I mean, I mean obviously, you know, it's very much used as a motivator within the group and to make you feel good about the group that Tom Cruise can stand up there and say blah 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 you know yeah. whatever they say. Day to day life though was different for you? Completely different yeah. I mean it was yeah. look I joined staff uh, um, because I, I bought all the courses I could I didn't have a lot of money look I was a young fellow in Germany. Yeah but these are expensive too aren't they you have to kind of hand over your money. Very much so, and you're, 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 you are hard sold to, yeah. to hand over your money, to buy any books, to be, because it works in statistics, basically. What about day-to-day uh, -day life, though? Did you have to wear a uniform? Yeah, well, what I did was, uh, I joined the Sea Organization quite quickly, which is like the elite, uh, and that's a, a quasi-naval thing. So if you can imagine, like, um, oh... Uh, you know, an officer on the deck of kind of Irish ferries or something, you know, with mm -hmm. the kind of the black tie, the epaulettes yeah. and all that stuff. And so that was what, what we wore. Um, we had to do military drill. We had to do um, marching and reciting and, you know, mm -hmm. group reciting. Yeah. Of, 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 what did you of say things. during those groups? Um, well, I mean, one example is... Um, uh, a simple phrase is from Hubbard Singh. He says, um, "You know, our job is to make money, make more money, make make mm. money in order to make more money." That was one thing that we we drilled. We, we, we still say that every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, what the group does, it very rapidly undermines any former beliefs, any former uh, thought structures. You know, for instance, uh, your education. You're told that. Um, even if you've got university education, that education is completely invalid. It's all wrong. Yeah, Are totally. they saying it's wrong? Yeah. They what, you've it's learned wrong. It, what, you've, what you've spent four years in university, if you do whatever you've learned there, it's wrong. It's incorrect. It's gone. It, it, it's, it's completely it's void. Null and so void. So you have to learn how to study using L. Ron Hubbard's method, which is a basic study manual. Where, and, and, yeah, that involves, you know, looking up every single word. It involves... Um, well, it involves a complete undermining of what you Because the teachings of Scientology is based on 1930s science fiction stories. Yeah. The whole thing is based on that. Look, when I discovered that, uh, I, was, I was in a position where I was able to discover that um, the key secret of Scientology had to do with space aliens, 
um, who were dumped on Earth uh, 75 billion years ago into volcanoes that, that were blown up by nuclear bombs and then these space aliens were thrown around and attached to human bodies. So do they say that you're an alien? Do, are you to believe no, you're a super I, being? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, obviously, I come from, it, this is in their theology, I, I, because I'm in the Sea Org, I was a member of a, of a galactic space brigade that was fighting evil, evil psychiatrists, on, or, you know, through the millennia, through the millennia. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing. So you believed that for many oh, years? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I, mean, I mean, look, the, you don't have influence from outside. You don't have television, you don't have internet, you don't have newspapers, you, don't, you barely have radio. If you're driving a car, mm -hmm. you might turn the radio on. But you don't have any other critical information. Mm -hmm. And so you become kind of a, a zombie yeah. within this group. And so you believe this stuff. I wanted to believe that I was a you know, commander a of the super space. Being, yeah. you know, and some of the processes made you think that you remembered it. Yeah. But what did your family think? Did they think you've gone missing? Well, well, I'd already been traveling for, three, for, for several years before yeah. that around, around the world with drama. Um, and so the UI was kind of a footloose and, yeah. you know, traveling. Yeah. But so they don't believe that you should, though, the Church of Scientology, do they believe that you should cut ties with your family and friends? Yeah, they try to, because it influences you, because they would say, what are you doing? You know what okay. I mean? Qu know, any questioning things yeah, they don't want to know. You know, a Catholic parents, you know, would say, you know, uh, are you going to church? And then that would make you unstable within the Scientology okay. thing. So Scientology it's all about stability. Yeah. But then you decided after 22 years to leave. Now, first yeah. of all, why? And, and secondly, was it difficult to extract yourself? It's, it was extremely difficult to, 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 to extract myself. Why? It's an ongoing erosion of, you know, of understanding of their system, basically. I did find that Hubbard blatantly lied about stuff, you know, once I saw the actual, you know, His writings you're talking about in yeah, the 50s, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so if the guru lies, mm -hmm. that's quite a shock. Basically. Did you just walk out the door one day, John? No, um, uh, I realised that this was a lie. It's a very controlling group. It's very difficult to get out of, right? Um, and so I, I, I literally had to create a ruse. I told them I was back in Ireland. Right. In other words, I, I was working remotely for, for, for a while. And I told them I'd come back to Ireland because my uncle was dying. Um, and actually, what I, did, I went to hiding in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, I'd called home. And uh, my, my, my foster mum said, uh, you better not call. There's two guys sitting outside there. They've been there for a week. They're watching the house. Mm -hmm. And I said, OK. So I stayed hiding for a while in Birmingham. And then I actually walked by the organisation one day in order that they see me. And that same day, I'd already booked tickets and I flew back to Ireland. Mm -hmm. By the time I'd flown back, those guys had flown back to Birmingham to look for me. You know, so I was so able to get how out. long did it take, did they continue to, uh, I don't want to use the word harass, no. but continue to contact with you, continue contact with you to get you back in? Um, they, well, they were looking for me for about a month, um, and then there were emails coming to me for about, for, for, for yeah, I'd say about another month after that. It's, a, it's, it's a absolutely fascinating, fascinating story, story really John. And 22 thank years you. later as well. Yeah, yeah, 22 years, yeah, I'm, I'm alive and breathing. Okay. John, thank you very much for coming in and telling your story today. Pleasure.